Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So let's start uh, uh, and let's start uh, right right away. So we were discussing capacity of a wireless channel. We had a quick recap or review session on uh, information theory last time, and today we'll start uh, discussing capacity of wireless channel under different conditions. So what we said was that suppose we have a discrete time uh, channel and suppose if x of i is the input of the channel and white Gaussian noise n of i gets added on top of it then the receive signal y of i would be x of i plus this white Gaussian noise and this channel is called a Gaussian channel and if you want to find out what is the capacity of the channel which was defined as the maximum number of bits or the maximum information that you can transmit over a channel and if the base of the logarithm is 2 then that information would have units of bits so we said that the capacity of a Gaussian channel is one half log base 2 of 1 plus p over sigma square where p was the expected value of x square was the, the transmit signal's average power and sigma squared was nothing but the noise power because noise was also assumed to be zero mean so both x and noise at the receiver end uh, were both assumed to be zero mean and hence their variance represent the total average power as well so that was the capacity but it, it has a unit of bits for example and then we said that if we have a band limited channel and the band bandwidth is limited to be heard and suppose that uh, the noise power that would be equal to sigma squared that is equal to n naught b so that is that is for a noise having a power spectral density of n naught by 2 and the channel bandwidth is b so n naught b would be the power in the noise and we said that we can define gamma which is the equals to the signal to noise ratio and that can be written as p over n naught b and under these conditions the capacity c can be written as the b log base 2 of 1 plus gamma which is the signal to noise ratio bits per second this was a famous Shannon formula to for the capacity of a Gaussian channel and this uh, Shannon's capacity formula was derived using uh, information theoretical concept and the Chen proved, proved in his 1948 paper that this capacity is nothing but the maximum information, mutual information between x and y and this maximization would occur over the distribution of x and he proved that by the way this i of x y was defined to be equals to h of y minus h of y given x where h of y is the entropy or the measure of information in the random variable or random source y h of y given x is the information left in y given the knowledge of x so, so this formula as we discussed in the last lecture gives you the mutual information between x and y and Chen proved that the capacity C is nothing but the mutual information x and y maximized over 
all possible distributions of the input source x. And for a Gaussian channel, he also proved that the maximizing distribution, which maximizes this information, maximizing distribution is also the Gaussian distribution. So we, we can, we proved last time that using these uh, information theoretical concepts, we can derive uh, this formula for the Shannon capacity, which was derived by computing HFI, or the differential entropy for a Gaussian random variable, also computing what is H of Y to an X for a Gaussian distribution, where Y and X both are Gaussian distributions, and then we prove that if we compute the mutual information, it comes out to be this famous Shannon's formula, which is B log base two of one plus signal to noise ratio of bits per second. So that, that was for a Gaussian channel. And this capacity we would always refer to as CAWGN, CAWGN would be would always be equal to B log base 2 of 1 plus gamma bits per second. Now this gamma would not be a constant for a virus channel. It would have some distribution. And if you want to compute the stochastic uh, capacity, it is referred as the ergodic capacity of, uh, of a virus channel. So the ergodic capacity, C ergodic, would be integral from 0 to infinity. The C A W G N or B log base 2 of 1 plus gamma and then you would average it out over the fading distribution or the distribution of gamma, P gamma of gamma, D gamma. So this would be referred as the ergodic capacity and we would refer to this ergodic capacity and we would come back to this ergodic capacity in a minute as well. This would be, this is defined, this is the definition of the ergodic capacity that if your gamma has a, has a distribution, then you can compute its ergodic capacity or the stochastic capacity by averaging out over the over the distribution of the gamma, assuming that the bandwidth would be fixed for the uh, for, for this uh, for this transmission. So this would be the ergodic capacity. And one thing which we can see right away that this C ergodic would always be less than or equal to the C ergodic. Will always be less than or equal to C A W G N. And the reason is the Jensen's inequality. Uh, we know that this C ergodic is B integral from 0 to infinity B log base 2 of 1 plus gamma P gamma of gamma T gamma. So this would always be less than or equal to. So if you if you compute the average of this quantity, this would be less than or equals to B log base 2 of 1 plus the expected value of gamma That means if you compute expectation of this entire thing B log base 2 of 1 plus gamma through Jensen's, Jensen's inequality, this operation, this would give you, this, this expectation would be less than or equals to B log base 2 of 1 plus the expected value of gamma. And this would be gamma bar, right? And hence, this C ergodic, which is on the left-hand side, 
would be less than or equals to this would be C A to be G N. So that is that is a direct result of Jensen's inequality. Which, uh, from which we can see that the ergodic capacity would always be less than the capacity under AWGN. And so we'll stop here and we'll come, come back in the next video.